What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video I'm going to give you guys my one year update after my coding boot camp. If you guys are new to the channel, we talk about everything from tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, all that good stuff here on this channel. So if that sounds like something is up your alley, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to just keep making these videos for you guys. And we're gonna jump, go ahead and jump right into it. So I spent about a year at my job and a year out of boot camp, and I just want to put together my top points or takeaways or things that I've noticed or learned over this last year. The first important thing is build relationships. Once you leave coding bootcamp or while you're in coding bootcamp, build relationships with those people. And I mean everybody, not just the other developers and students, but whether it's your career counselor, your teacher, your TA, the directors of their programs, project managers, program managers, whatever is there, whoever is there, try to network and build re like meaningful relationships, not just like business, leachy, parasitic relationships, but actually connect and resonate with these people because you'd be surprised how well connected everybody is in the tech industry so when some of your classmates go off and get hired at some places that could become a easy referral or recommendation for you to get a job in the future and if they work with certain recruiters you never know you know they'll be willing to introduce you to recruiters who can help you know maybe place you at jobs or you know put you up on jobs that as they come uh, as they come up so you can be one of the first people to actually apply for the job it gives you better odds of getting in if they have a good relationship with that recruiter it can all play in your favor and with your teachers your TAs and program managers directors these people could always be like a great professional reference for you or speak to your technical abilities and things like that I'm kind of introverted myself so I know how networking and relationship building kind of sounds for some people out there but it doesn't have to be this big grandiose thing. It doesn't have to be this big mission that you have to accomplish, right? Just talking to people, finding some sort of common ground and just, you know, keeping in touch with those people. And um, those things go a really long way. The second thing is once you get hired and once you finish your coding bootcamp, you have to stay learning to stay competitive. You have to always be learning new stuff. You have to always be dabbling with new stuff. At least check it out, see what it's about. You don't have to become a master or a whiz, but you should at least be familiar to new things. So that's something that I spent this entire year doing. I feel like my depth of coding knowledge has gotten better, but my breadth has gotten, I've seen the biggest improvement or whatever in my breadth of knowledge, the amount of things that I know a decent amount about. AWS, Heroku, Docker, uh, Golang, uh, Node, Python, Ruby, Rails, uh, different ORMs, like all different types of tools, languages, GraphQL, uh, just anything that is catching a buzz or popularity in the industry, it would benefit you to even just go and play around with it. If you don't like it, you don't like it, but exposing yourself to it ends up being what helps you out the most because then if it ever comes up in a job interview or if you have to put it down in your resume, at least you can speak knowledgeably about it. You can speak about a project that you used that particular tool in or you dabbled in it or you can at least show that you had enough interest or you have enough interest in the in the technology world and where the industry is going to where when new things come out, you at least go and take a look and see what it's about or see how it might be able to help you or form your own opinion about it. And then you, you go from there. My third thing that I noticed is that getting a second job once you've gotten hired is better than getting a promotion. And so what I, what I've learned from watching other people in the industry, I can't say I've done it. So I can't really speak from experience on this one, but I've seen a lot of people who worked at my current job for one year and then they left and it wasn't necessarily that they weren't getting paid what they, what they deserved. It wasn't that work is, you know, work life balance is not good. It wasn't that the culture was terrible, uh, depending on the person where I work, you know, it doesn't necessarily have a terrible company culture. So with that being said, why would people work only one year and then go somewhere else, right? But the reality is that you can stay and try to get a promotion, but a promotion doesn't happen on a set timeline. And I'm sure that's anywhere, any industry. So there's nothing that says that after one year, you're guaranteed to get promoted. And there's nothing that says after two years, you're guaranteed to get promoted. 
And so what that means is I personally, now that I've seen so many examples of it in the tech industry, I understand why people bounce around, they jump around because they want to get in, provide value and learn new skills and build on their existing skills so they can go somewhere else and bring more value and in turn receive more money and more freedom and more better work-life balance or whatever it is that they want they desire more uh, vacation time whatever the case may be but they use the jobs as opportunities to enhance their skill set so they can go somewhere else and and be of higher value and that always comes with more money too so you can stay and you can wait around in the promotion, but you might end up stuck two, three, four, five years at a time as opposed to getting in, being as good of an employee as you can while you're there, but just soaking up as many new experiences, new information, new perspectives as you can so that you can just take all that stuff, sell yourself to another company and turn that knowledge and experience into more money and a better position for yourself career-wise. So getting a second job is better than waiting around for a promotion. And the last thing was just literally going to be um, just taking advantage of of time, your time at work. And so, again, that's just whatever you can do, however you can find a way to, you know, boost your skills, whether that's if you have a side project you're working on at work. Um, you know, I think that's that's great if you're doing some sort of like Pluralsight or Udemy course or something while you're at work in your free time, whether that's your lunch break, getting there early or staying late or instead of like taking a break and going and chilling with people and doing stuff, maybe just go ahead and do some algorithms, or do some practice stuff like because just being at work alone, even if you're there for a whole year, naturally you will get better as a developer. I no doubt am far better this year than I was a year ago today. But what I will say is a lot of my improvement came from the time I put in outside of work. So yeah, I, I do things while I'm at work, um, but that can also kind of cause conflicts. And if you do it too much, it can become problematic a little bit. So take that with a grain of salt, but um, you gotta be working all the time, especially outside of work on, on your skill set. So obviously take advantage of all the time you can at work without you know pushing too many buttons, but outside of work though, you gotta be always doing something, projects, courses, whatever it is to just be getting your skills more and more and more raw, especially your fundamentals, um, because that's that can always only help you if the better you are with the fundamentals of computer science and whatever language you're working with. Uh, the better you'll be long term. So you always have to be, always have to be working, always have to be taking advantage of all the time that you can get to to always be making yourself better, so that you can always be, um, you can always be sought after uh, to work as a developer. Because if not, if your skills are just kind of subpar, there's gonna always be people coming in working harder than you. They can do better and. Uh, you'll get passed up for those jobs, and then you can get stuck at whatever job you're at, and rot as a developer. And that's not why you guys are here. That's not why you come to this channel. We don't come here to rot as developers. We come here to talk about stuff like this so that we can be ahead of the curve and get better. So speaking of that, if you guys are brand new, whether you're brand new to coding or thinking about going to a coding bootcamp, make sure you check out the description box down below where I'm giving out my free intro to coding bootcamp course. It's got everything in it that I wish I knew going into a coding bootcamp. So you're gonna build front end projects, you're gonna do some back end stuff, it's incredible. So daringthedev.thinkofit.com, if you guys wanted to go and get a little warm up, a little taste of what you can expect at bootcamp, go take that. And if this was helpful, you guys, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to keep making these videos for you guys. There's a bunch of stuff down in my freebie section uh, in the description box, so make sure you guys go check that out. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Daring with Daring the Dev, all right? Peace.